All right. Someone asked me on my blog about, like, how to get into keeping isopods and the like. So I'm gonna try and be as brief as possible and kind of go over just what I do and maybe discuss a bit of what other people do as well. Because the post I made on my blog was super long. <laughs> it's a bunch of info dumping. So what I do um, well, let me talk first about how I got them. So, I have two species. I have Porcelio dilatatus, which is a desert, desert or giant canyon is what people call them. These are a large, uh, drought-resistant species. They don't quite roll up into a ball like most roly-polies or isopods that people are used to because th this is a Porcelio um, genus. They don't- I'm pretty sure most of the Porcelios can't do that. Um, armadil- armadilidium is the one that can roll into a ball. Um, and then I have dwarf whites. I've don't know the scientific name for these guys, but they're a very small species. And I have these guys um, because I put them in with um, reptiles and other invertebrates that will eat the bigger species. So I have a small species and a big species. Um, I got both of them at reptile conventions. Um, you can get them at reptile conventions because a lot of people do bioactive. Um, you can get a whole bunch of other invertebrates at reptile conventions. Anyway, um, you can also, you know, find them on Amazon. Uh, you can Other online stores will have plenty of other morphs and species. Um, well, you can also just get them outside. You can start lifting up rocks and find your local isopod species. It's probably going to be armadillidium. 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 It's, it's a hard word to say. Um, at least if you're in North America. Um, so yeah, I keep them in these Tupperware plastic containers. You, you can keep them. This is like a shoe box size, maybe? Um, I think this had a small colony of dupias in it once. But, yeah, something like this will work fine. You can poke holes in the top if you so choose. I don't have holes in these two because I open them up weekly just to check on them. And it just keeps things out and keeps things in, so I don't worry about with holes. But if you are worried about airflow or if you don't think you can check up on them, weekly, then sure. Air holes in the top is fine. Or you can do air holes in the sides. Um, just if you do it in the sides, you don't have to go all the way around like I did with my dubias. You can do um, top here on one side and top here on one the other side. You want to cross breeze. Um, this just promotes good airflow. So anyway, back over here. So you have your isopods. You've chosen the isopod you want to get. Now, how do you set up their enclosure? Well, uh, you figure out what you want first. So if you do plastic bins like me, which are super convenient, they hold moisture in really well, and isopods need moisture to breathe uh, because they're a crustacean. Um, or you can go with a glass terrarium and make it fancy and plant it if you want. Um, you know do whatever. Um, I just do the cheap and easy. So you have your container, enclosure, terrarium, whatever. You're gonna get topsoil is what I get because it's super cheap. Topsoil is like two bucks and it's a huge bag that you can get at like Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace Hardware or whatever. Uh, just make sure it doesn't have any fertilizers in it. Um, fertilizers will kill um, your creatures, or they'll put toxins in them, and if your other creatures end up eating your creatures, then, you know, toxins build up in the food chain. So it's, it's just not something you really want for your, um, animals. Anyway, so topsoil. Topsoil is usually a mix of dirt, 
a little bit of sand, uh, and some wood chips, and that's totally fine. You just throw that in there. Um, I also have sphagnum moss, which you can get. It's like about six bucks in the garden center of Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you shop. Um, and that keeps moisture in, and it's mold resistant, so you don't really have to worry about that. And you can get cocoa fiber. You can find that in the reptile section of your Petco or PetSmart. You can order it online, of course. Um, it's not super, super expensive or anything, but once you get all of that, you more or less don't really need to replace it. Um, you can maybe replace it yearly if you want to refresh your enclosures. I kind of go in every few months and just kind of stir up the dirt a bit more. Um, because isopods kind of dig in dirt anyway. They kind of aerate the soil. But y you, you can go in and stir them up and mess with them as well. Um, so twigs, soil, sand if you want. If you're... Topsoil doesn't come with sand, I guess. Um, I haven't found a really a need to put any sand in there. Cocoa fiber helps retain moisture as well. Um, leaves. Leaves will help retain moisture, and it's something that they will eat. So you can put leaves in there. Um, if you harvest leaves from outside, make sure it's from an area... Well, if you harvest anything from outside, make sure you get it from an area that isn't sprayed by pesticides or insecticides, um, or weed killers, or anything like that. Um, just be conscious about that. You don't want to accidentally poison yourself or your creatures. Um, and yeah, we can take a look at what it looks like in my dwarf whites. I'll disturb them for you. You can see sphagnum. Um, what I put all up in here, here's some a dirt clump. Um, I've disturbed them recently, so they might be out and about. Focus, and then... Ah, uh, you can see them moving. They're very tiny. Dwarf whites are indeed dwarf. Um, so yeah, they just kind of do their thing. I don't really mess with them too much. Um... Just check on them. I feed them in the same area when I do put food scraps in. Just to make sure, like, so I know where to look. Um, and see if they're, you know, eating it fast enough. They're very small, so it takes them a while to eat things. So you don't want to overload them. Um, my Desert Canyon container is a bigger container. Because not only are they a bigger species, but I want them to grow into a bigger colony. So, bigger container, the more I suppose you will end up getting. So, the same. These guys have more twigs in there. It's a bit drier because they're more drought resistant. Um, let's see if I have any. Yeah, there's one. Yeah. So they're pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, they'll, they'll eat twigs, they'll eat leaves. Um, I put potato skins or clippings or whatever in. Um, carrot, occasional broccoli, bell pepper. Um, I will sometimes do fish food and dog kibble. That's just to make sure that they're getting, like, a well-rounded nutrient supply. Um, as you probably know, um, cat food and dog food are, depending on where, which brand you get, are formulated by veterinary nutritionists. So you pretty much know that you're getting, you know, the essential amino acids and protein and fat and all that good stuff that life needs. So, yes, is it formulated for dogs or cats? Yeah. But an isopod is, a, you know, kind of at the bottom. They're detritivores, so they'll eat anything and everything. And you just want to make sure that they're, you know, that they have access to anything and everything. Um... The only thing I want to say 
about kibbles and fish foods is that they have grain in them for the most part, depending on what type of fish food you get, I guess. Um, and grain can attract uh, grain mites. So I would only feed kibble and fish food very occasionally and in very small amounts. Um, for a colony like this, uh, I may put in one kibble piece every month or every other month. For a colony like this, I would probably not even do a whole kibble piece, <laughs> but I'm just overly cautious about that. Um, grain mites are harmless, but they're freaking annoying, um, and they're technically stealing food away from your isopods, so I just try to avoid that. Um, as for water, I did mention that they breathe through gills because they're a crustacean, but they don't really need a water bowl. In fact, they'll probably drown in it if you offer them one. Um, just make sure that the soil that they're in is moist enough. You can put a rock in there um, and make sure, like, you know, the soil under that rock is moist. And the, because the rock is there, it'll um, inhibit evaporation. You can do what I do and just not put any holes in, and that'll keep things moist for a while. You are going to want to open your containers up. If you do what I do um, occasionally, I do it weekly, um, just because they need air, so they uh, respire, so they produce, you know, carbon dioxide, they need to replenish, you know. Um, so yeah, um, if you put them in enclosures with other animals, like snakes or lizards or whatever, like I do, because of bioactive enclosures, um... And those animals need water bowls. What I recommend doing is putting a rock in the water bowl so they can climb out easy enough. I usually angle it on the lip so they can just swim over and climb out, theoretically. Um, I've never seen... Well, that's a lie. Before I put a rock in my water bowl in my snake's enclosure, I did see um, a couple of isopods drown. So after I did that, I never saw any more uh, dead isopods, at least from drowning. So, um, that's about it, I think. They, they're pretty simple. You can go all out and have a nice, planted, beautiful-looking terrarium, or you can do what I do, which is just cheap. I have them there. They're really cool to look at. Um, I feed them table scraps and occasional dog kibble or fish food, um, and eggshells. To make sure they're getting, you know, the nutrients that they need. I think that's pretty it. I've gone over where you can get them, how to set up their enclosure, uh, water, why they need it, how they can get it, uh, foods. Yeah, I think I, I think that's it. Um, go out, have fun with your isopods. <laughs>